we already know the performance for Lovelace and RDNA 3. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by XreArt. XreArt is a company that takes classic technology and disassembles it to be used in artwork that not only looks cool, but teaches you about the inner workings of the devices. From phones to consoles and even watches, XreArt has a ton of great looking artwork available that's a perfect addition to your computer room, man cave, or anywhere you want to add some life to. So if you're looking for a great way to express your passion and support the channel, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. So recently there's been just a ton of leaked information posted over on YouTube about Lovelace and RDNA 3 by the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech who's gotten a ton of stuff right about especially AMD GPUs in the past so I definitely would go ahead and call him a very credible source. And in fact there's been so much information posted by him recently that honestly this combined with some stuff posted recently by the Twitter leaker Graymon55 over on Twitter I think we do actually have enough information to finally go ahead and compare the 7950 XT to the RTX 4090 Ti and finally answer the question, can Nvidia actually beat AMD this time around once again, or is AMD gonna finally go ahead and take that performance crown as it is starting to look like AMD has an absolute monster of a GPU according to the leaks, and Nvidia is definitely gonna be in for some big trouble. So in order to answer this question, let's first go ahead and take a look at what Greymon55 posted over on Twitter. Now according to Greymon55, he posted this, equals 92T FP32. Now if we go ahead and actually decode this message, he's talking about 92 teraflops of FP32 compute performance and this is actually in regards to RDNA 3 as it's honestly the only thing at least in my opinion that makes any sense and everybody below also does appear to be talking about RDNA 3 as well so he's probably talking about the absolute top skew here and in terms of performance 92 teraflops is an, an absolutely insane improvement over the 6900 XT and this also does indicate that with 15,360 shaders that have been leaked at this point for the 7950 XT this means it would have to be running at 3 gigahertz to actually go ahead and hit these numbers, which is absolutely insane. However, it's actually, yes, technically possible. RDNA 3 could definitely go ahead and hit 3 gigahertz, and I've definitely seen people like Red Gaming Tech go ahead and say that, yes, it does actually hit 3 gigahertz. However, we do have to actually ask the question, is the top skew going to really hit 3 gigahertz? And honestly, guys, I don't think that's going to be the case, because we do have to remember that the top skew is going to be only 450 watts, and I know only 450 watts is an absolutely ridiculous thing to say, but we do have to keep in mind that the 6900 XT only draws 300 watts. So for only a 50% increase in the TDP, we're going to be getting three times the cores, an IPC jump, as well as a clock speed jump. And honestly, uh, I think three gigahertz for a clock speed bump, although it could actually be possible, is going to end up being a little bit too high, and it's going to end up pushing their power budget just that little bit too much, and it's not going to allow them to hit that 450 watt limit. So honestly, guys, I'm thinking that RDNA 3's top skew is going to max out somewhere around 2.7 gigahertz, and don't worry, that's still a 500 megahertz increase over the 2250 megahertz that we're seeing out of the 6900 XT. So still a massive increase right there, but honestly, once again, I think 3 gigahertz is going to be pushing it just a little bit too much further top and skew. So if we keep that in mind, we actually go ahead and do the math once again. Well, at 2.7 gigahertz, the RDNA 3 top and 7950 XT would actually come in at around 83 teraflops of FP32 compute performance. Now, not quite as impressive as 92 teraflops, but it's still a massive increase over the current 23 teraflops on the 6900 XT. But now that we have the actual teraflop number of where I believe the 7950 XT is actually going to rest, now let's go ahead and take a look at the RTX 4090 Ti and see if Nvidia can indeed actually match or even beat the 7950 XT. So taking a look at the RTX 4090 Ti, what we do know is that it's going to have 18,432 CUDA cores, at least according to the leak. So if we go ahead and we do the math, well if we take that and we times it by maybe a maximum boost clock of 2.5 GHz, which I have been hearing people throw around for a little while now, well then we'll go ahead and actually get the number of 92 teraflops. So that's actually very, very interesting. So that actually does, at least in theory, give NVIDIA a slight lead over AMD. So does this mean that NVIDIA is going to actually beat the 7950 XT? Well, actually no, because there's a little bit more that goes into the performance of a GPU than just the teraflop number. Because although, yes, NVIDIA would have more teraflops at 92 versus 83, well, if we go ahead and we actually take a look at, say, for example, the 6900 XT versus the RTX 3090, we actually have a similar situation here where Nvidia does actually have a significant increase in teraflops versus the 6900 XT at 35 versus 23. However, yet these two cards are basically identical. I know it does depend on what resolution you play at, but overall, yeah, they're pretty close. So what we can actually glean from this is that RDNA 2 actually has 52% higher IPC versus Nvidia's architecture. So if we go ahead and we keep that in mind, well, let's go ahead and do some more math here to figure out how these next generation GPUs are going to stack up. Well, let's take 52% times the 7950 XT's 83 teraflops, and that gives 
gives us roughly 126 teraflops of effective NVIDIA FP32 performance. And so now that we have that information, we can actually go ahead and compare it to what NVIDIA is roughly going to have. So 126 divided by 92 teraflops of a maximum theoretical performance out of the RTX 4090 Ti. Well, that actually gives AMD's 7950 XT a 37% increase over what NVIDIA is going to be able to put out with the RTX 4090 Ti. So is NVIDIA doomed? Can they not get anywhere even close to the 7950 XT? Well, actually, still not quite because we're not talking about IPC yet. So yes, AMD will technically, at least in theory, be 37% faster. What we don't know is, you know, how much is NVIDIA going to be able to push their IPC? And honestly, guys, I do think we're going to see a decent IPC uplift out of NVIDIA's next generation cards. And I don't think that AMD is going to be able to do anything similar. I think AMD is going to be using all of their transistor budget on making these things go as fast as they possibly can and be as big as they possibly can and simply won't be able to raise their IPC by very much. So if we keep that in mind, well, honestly, can NVIDIA make up the difference of 37% in IPC? And for that question, I'm going to have to go ahead and say, well, Honestly, no, probably not. NVIDIA is probably not going to be able to get a 37% increase in IPC. That would be nearly unheard of. That's just absolutely ridiculous. So I don't think they'll actually be able to pull that off. However, they may be able to get close. They might be able to get somewhere between like 15 and 20% IPC. So if we're going to be generous to NVIDIA, let's say that they get 20%. And just to make things even, let's say they get a 22% IPC uplift on the RTX 4090 Ti. That actually would put them within 15% of the RX 7950. DXC, which is very, very close. And at that point, that's going to get NVIDIA close enough where it is going to get a lot of people who like to buy NVIDIA cards to go ahead and stay with NVIDIA. However, all of this is going to come at a cost, and that cost is power because as I've been hearing, the RTX 4090 Ti is allegedly going to draw up to 600 watts of power. And at first, I thought that was absolutely ridiculous, but the more I learn about the RTX 4090 Ti, honestly, yes, that definitely could be the case because if NVIDIA is going to be pushing for 2.5 gigahertz as a boost clock, which they basically absolutely need to do to come within striking distance of the RX 7950 XT, that's gonna require a lot of power because keep in mind that the RTX 3090 has like a 1.7 gigahertz boost clock. Now, the RTX 3090 Ti does have like, it's closer to like a two gigahertz boost clock. So yes, their cards can definitely boost higher. It just draws a ridiculous amount of power. So I think Nvidia moving to TSMC 5 nanometer could pull off 2.5 gigahertz. It's just gonna draw a lot of power. So if you're looking for an Nvidia card next time around and you're wondering, can they match AMD? Honestly, uh, yeah, they'll get very, very close. However, again, it's going to come at the cost of a lot of power. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think NVIDIA is going to actually be able to match the 7950 XT, or do you think they're going to fall short? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.